So to solve a question like this, all you need to do is just plug in this number they give you, negative 4, into your function. And they say that the answer to that is going to be something called c. So let's just start by plugging in negative 4. So f of negative 4 is equal to 3 plus the absolute value of negative 2 times negative 4 minus negative 4 squared. And we follow our order of operations. So f of negative 4 is equal to 3 plus whatever is inside the absolute value can serve as a parenthesis. So negative 2 times negative 4 minus, we have an exponent here, so we do that for first. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, the absolute value. And then f of negative 4 is equal to 3 plus the absolute value of negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 minus 16. And we'll continue. f of negative 4 is equal to 3 plus the absolute value of 8 minus 16, which is negative 8. And then f of negative 4 is equal to 3 plus positive 8, because whenever you have the absolute value, you just take the positive version of it. That means f of negative 4 is equal to 11. And we're told that f of negative 4 is c. So that means c is equal to 11. And now, but it wants to know what is g of c. So just plug in 11, what we found for c, into this equation. So doing that, we will get that g of 11 is equal to the absolute value of negative 11 over 11 minus 1 minus 11 plus 5. And again, you follow the order of operations. So you have negative 11 over 10, the absolute value, minus 11, plus 5. g of 11 is equal to positive 11 over 10, minus 11, plus 5. And you can plug this into decimals as a calculator, or we can just continue doing this. You get g of 11 is equal to 11 over 10, minus 110 over 10, plus 50 over 10 to turn everything to, to have, for everything to have common denominator. g of 11 is equal to negative 99 over 10, plus 50 over 10. And then g of 11 is equal to negative 49 over 10, which means that the g of 11 is equal to negative 4.9. And this question might have actually been best to do in Desmos. So going into Desmos, you can say that f of x is equal to the equation that we're given, 3 plus the absolute value of negative 2x minus x squared, g of w, but Desmos doesn't let you put things that are x and y. So we can just call this x and just keep in our head that they're two separate values. So g of x is equal to the absolute value of negative w, but x because we're substituting it so Desmos can do its thing. Negative w over w minus 1 minus w plus 5. And so you just say f of negative 4 is 11, and then g of 11 is negative 4.9. So for this question, we are asked, given the system of equations, and whenever you generate these questions from college, college Board's test bank, it doesn't properly split up those two equations, but that shouldn't be a problem on test day. Just know that these are two separate equations. So it's asking, what is the value of k? where we have one distinct real solution. And so the way to do this is you have to use a discriminant. That equation is b squared minus 4ac. And so once you plug in your values into the discriminant, depending on what you get, tells you how many solutions your equation has. So if your discriminant is greater than zero, you have two real solutions. And if your discriminant is equal to zero, you have one real solution, which is what we're interested in this case. And if d is less than zero, you have two imaginary solutions. So for our case, we're just interested in one real solution. Okay, but we have two, two different equations. How can we get that? Well, you need to merge them together into one. So we can just subtract the two equations from one another. So if we write this out, y plus k is equal to x plus 26. And then you have y minus k is equal to x squared minus 5x. And just subtract them. So we have y plus k as one term minus y minus k as the other term is equal to x plus 26 minus x squared minus 5x. And make sure you match this order. If you have y plus k here for this equation, you have x plus 26 here as the first term for the other side. Okay, so combining like terms, you have y plus k, so let's distribute this negative. You have y plus k minus y plus k is equal to x plus 26 minus x squared plus 5x. So y minus y cancels, so k plus k is 2k, so you have 2k is equal to x plus 5x is 6x, and then plus 26 minus x squared. So let's rearrange this into how we usually see it as x squared plus something, something, something. So rearranging that into that fashion, we have 2k is equal to negative x squared plus 6x plus 26. Okay, but we also need to move this 2k over in order to get 0 on one side. So 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 6x plus 26 minus 2k because we're told up here that k is just some constant. So it doesn't have an extra term of x or anything. We just merge that with a 26. That's the like term. So now we're ready to plug everything into the discriminant where again, we want our discriminant d to be equal to 0 to only have one solution. So that being said, we just say 0 is equal to b squared minus 4ac where the values for b, a, and c come from this equation. So a is equal to negative 1, because that's this coefficient. b is equal to 6, which is this coefficient. And c is equal to 26 minus 2k, because this is all one big constant, one big term, one big number. So 0 is equal to 6 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 26 minus 2k. 
So doing this math, we just need to solve for k. So 0 is equal to 36 minus negative 4 times 26 minus 2k. Stripping that out, we get 0 is equal to 36 minus negative 104 plus 8k. So having some more space here, 0 is equal to 36, distributing this negative, plus 104 minus 8k. 0 is equal to 140 minus 8k. Negative 140 is equal to negative 8k. k is equal to 17 and a half. And of course, you can skip all this arithmetic that I did and just plug it into Desmos. I just wrote it out for you just so you get some practice doing some algebra. And this question can also be done in Desmos. If you write out the two equations that you're given, y plus k, creating some constant slider for k, is equal to x plus 26. And then we have a second equation here saying that y minus k is equal to x squared minus 5x. We will have an answer for k where they only intersect one time, like it was given to us in the problem. So moving the slider up, you know that we're getting closer to only having one. So let's just adjust the scale. So if we adjust it all the way up to 17 and a half, if you were to do this on test day like this, you would see that at 17 and a half, you have only one point of intersection. So a question like this, where it's asking what is the minimum, you just need to know that you can find the vertex of any quadratic equation with the equation negative b over 2a. And your vertex will always be your minimum or your maximum when you have a second order polynomial, so x squared. Okay, so to straighten this out, we have x times x is x squared plus 19x minus 14x minus 14 times 19, which gives you 266. And so combine like terms, you have x squared plus 5x minus 266. So plugging this in, you have negative 5 over 2a, a being 1. And so you have negative 5 over 2. And of course, you can plug this into Desmos. So simply typing in the equation to give you x minus 14 times x plus 19. And then just keep scrolling until you find your vertex here, which will give you negative 2.5 and, and negative 272.25, which is the same thing that we found here. So for this question, we're given some function and saying that if that function is shifted down by subtracting 15, we have some y-intercept. And we want to know what is a given that a times b is 65 over 7. Okay, so let's start by writing this equation. Negative a to the x plus b minus 15. And we're told the y-intercept is 0 and negative 99 over 7. So this is your value for x, and this is for your, your value for y. So we just need to plug it in. So negative 99 over 7 is equal to negative a to the 0th power plus b minus 15. So negative 9 over 7 is equal to anything raised to the 0th power is just 1. So negative 1 plus b minus 15. So now we just need to solve for b. So if we plug this into a calculator, negative 9 over 7 plus 15 gives you queen is 6 over 7. 6 over 7 is equal to negative 1 plus b. And that means b is equal to 6 over 7 plus 7 over 7, because 7 over 7 is the same as 1. So b is equal to 13 over 7. And so we know that a times b is 65 over 7. So 65 divided by 7 is equal to a times 13 over 7. So now we need to solve for a. So you know that these are the same. The denominators are correct. So we just say 13a is equal to 65. That means a is equal to 5. So for this question, we're given some equation, and we're told that the solutions can be multiplied together to give something called kab, and we need to find what k is. So what that tells us is we also need to find what a and b is. So let's just solve this equation, and let's start by foiling out this x. So 57x squared plus foiling out this x is 57b times x, so 57bx plus a times x is just ax, plus ab is equal to 0. And if you notice, there are some common terms here. So there's a 57x here, a 57x here, and there's an a here and an a here. So let's go one at a time. Let's take out a 57. So 57, actually let's take out 57x. So 57x, taking that out from here, you're just left with x. Plus, taking out 57x, you're just left with b. And there's no 57x in, in the other equation, so let's just leave it. Plus ax plus ab is equal to 0. Okay, well let's do some more factoring, because we saw these extra a's here. So 57x, x plus b, plus a, the common term, Taking that away from here is x plus b. Taking the a away from here is equal to 0. But if you notice, we have this is a common term here, and this is a common term here to this. So let's factor out some more. So now we have 57x plus a, that being a brand new term because we have this on the outside here, multiplied by x plus b, and we can do that because they are common here and here to these two terms, is equal to 0. And knowing that anything multiplied by 0 is 0, we can say 57x plus a 
is equal to zero, and x plus b is equal to zero. And those would be our solutions. So x is equal to negative b, that is a solution. And 57x is equal to negative a, x is equal to negative a over 57. Okay, so those are our two solutions. And we're told that if we multiply a and b and k, that is the same thing as multiplying our two answers for x together. So the problem tells us that the product of our solutions, so negative a over 57, times negative b has to equal the same thing as k times a times b. Okay, but let's rewrite this in something that looks a little more familiar. We have negative 1 over 57 times a times negative b is equal to k a b. Well, that means we have a and b here. That means a is just whatever's left over. So what, what's left over is this a cancels with this a, this b cancels with this b. So you have negative 1 over 57 times negative 1, which is 1 over 57. So that means that k has to equal 1 over 57. So for this question, we're told that we're launching some kind of rocket, and we launch it at some initial height of 7 meters above the ground, and we met a maximum of 51, and that happens 3 seconds after the launch. And we want to know how long it will take to go back to 7. So basically, what we're doing here is we're drawing a parabola. We're launching some rocket, and it hits some maximum height here. So this is height, and this is time. And this height is 51.1 meters. And we know that this happens 3 seconds after our launch. All right, so what this question is really testing is, do you know the vertex form of your quadratic equations? And so the equation of a vertex form is y is equal to a, some constant, x minus h squared plus k, where h and k is your vertex. And so we know that the maximum or the minimum is always our vertex for a quadratic to the second order like this. So in our case, we're told it's 3 seconds and 51.1 meters high. So that means our equation is y is equal to a x minus 3 squared plus 51.1. All right, but how do we find what a is? Well, we're told some information. We're told that there was an initial height of 7 meters. Initial means 0. So if we plug in 7 is equal to a times 0, because we're at time t is 0, which is our x-axis, and height 7, which is our y-axis, minus 3 squared plus 51.1. We can just solve for a. So 7 is equal to a times 9 plus 51.1. So 7 minus 51.1 is negative 44.1 is equal to 9a. And divide, dividing by 9, you get negative, you get a is equal to negative 4.9. So that means our equation is y is equal to negative 4.9 x minus 3 squared plus 51.1. Okay, great. So we, now we want to know, when does it go back to 7? So we just plug in 7 for y. 7 is equal to negative 4.9x minus 3 squared plus 51.1. So solving for this, we do 7 minus 51.1 is negative 44.1 is equal to negative 4.9x minus 3 squared. So taking the square root of both sides, you have the square root of 9 is equal to x minus 3. And so the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3 is equal to x minus 3. So that means x minus 3 can equal positive 3, or x minus 3 can equal negative 3, which means x equals 6, or x equals 0. And we know 0 is what we started with, so our answer is x is equal to 6. So this question, we're told that what we're given is just equal to something x plus b. So let's just sum equal to each other. x squared minus c over x minus b is equal to x plus b. So let's just solve for c. x squared minus c is equal to x plus b times x minus b. And recognize that this is a multiplication of differences, a product of differences. So whenever you have something a plus b times a minus b, it always comes out to a squared minus b squared. So x squared minus c is equal to x squared minus b squared. So that means negative c is equal to x squared minus b squared minus x squared, so these cancel out. So negative c is equal to negative b squared, which means c is equal to b squared. Okay, well how does that really tell us what the answer is here? Because all these are numbers. Well, c has to be a perfect square, because c is equal to b times b. And we're told that b and c are integers, which means no decimals. So we have to find which one of these answer choices can come up with being something times itself. So for instance, four is two times two. So that's actually the answer. But can something give you six? Well, two times two is four. Well, what's three times three? That's nine. So that's definitely not possible. And so eight, well, three times three is nine, two times two is four, so that's not possible. And same story with 10, three times three is nine, but four times four is 16. So it can't be that, it has to be a, because we're told that c is a squared value. So it has to be something where you can take one value, multiply it by itself to get 
a nice number there. So C in this case could be four. So for this question, we're just saying, can we rearrange this equation properly? Well, okay, so we have four over four X minus five, which is some fraction, minus one over X plus one, which is another fraction. So that means we need a common denominator. So let's multiply everything by its opposite denominator. So what I mean by that is let's say four times X plus one, times four X minus five times X plus one. And we can do this because X plus one over X plus one is just one. So we can just leave that alone. Minus one times four X minus five, divided by X plus one times four X minus five. Okay, well now we have a common denominator. So we can just subtract these. So we have four X plus one minus four X minus five, all over four X minus five, X plus one. So let's foil out the top. So we have four X plus four by distributing this four, minus four X plus five by distributing this negative, all over four X minus five, x plus 1. So 4x minus 4x cancels, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So you have 9, 4x minus 5, x plus 1. And that is answer choice D. So this question, it wants you to know, can you rewrite the equation for this graph? And there's two ways to do this. You could plug this into decimals and just spit this out for you, which is probably the fastest way to do this. Or you remember the vertex form of a quadratic equation, which is y is equal to ax minus h squared plus k. And this being the coordinates of your vertex. And we know the vertex is this guy. It's negative one, negative eight. So that means y is equal to a x plus one squared minus eight. And how do we find a? Well, we're given some other points here. So let's just plug in the point here. So we're told negative six is equal to a zero plus one squared minus eight. So negative six is equal to a minus eight. A is equal to two. So plugging everything back in, we have y is equal to 2x plus 1 squared minus 8. But it's of this form, so we need to expand this equation. So y is equal to 2 times x plus 1, x plus 1 minus 8. So following this out, we get y is equal to 2 times x squared plus x plus x plus 1 minus 8. So distributing out this 2, you get y is equal to 2x squared plus 2x, well this is 2x, so that's 4x plus 2 minus 8. So y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. So we know b is 4 and c is 6. It's asking for bc. So 4 times negative 6 is equal to negative 24. But you could do this into Desmos. So in Desmos, if you type in table here, and you type in the points that were given, so negative 2 and negative 6, and negative 1 and negative 8, and zero and negative six. Let's reset this. If you click on this line here, notice we're you, usually you do this as a linear regression, a straight line, but we know that this is a quadratic equation. So you get quadratic re regression and you get your equation right there. Two X squared plus four X minus six. And it's asking for B times C. So B is four and C is negative six. And that's negative 24, which is exactly what we got by doing this by hand. So for this question, we're given some growth equation and we want to know how many months do we grow by 4%? Well, I see 4% in the equation, 1.04 right here. That means that we grow 1.04 and there's some type of exponent here. So whenever this exponent reaches one, that's when we hit a multiple of 1.04. And so that means all you have to do is just say six over four times t is equal to one, and just solve for t. So six t is equal to four, t is equal to four over six. Simplifying that, you get t is two thirds. But this equation is telling us that t is years. And we know that there's 12 months in a year. So just saying two over three times 12 to convert your months into years is 24 over three, which is eight months. So every eight months, you grow by 4%.